I'd like to call the meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Would the uh, planner please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Alderperson Boren? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Marilyn Montemeyer? Here. Dave Hoffman? Here. And Don Seaton? Here. Six are present. Quorum is present. Next, uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The people in the room here will uh, recite only. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll begin introduction of the committee members and staff. Dave, would you like to start? Jerry Jones, Vice Chairman, Citizen Member. Lenny Weiris, Building Inspection. Mike Vandersteen, Mayor and Chair. Chad Pelishek, Director of Planning and Development. Steve Sokolowski from the Planning Department. Don Spiton, Member. Anybody else? We got it. Those Com on. Commission members on the phone. Marilyn Montemayor, Citizen Representative. Alderman Jim Bourne of the 10th District. I'm the alder person on the City Plan Commission. Thank you very much. Uh, next uh, is uh, an item to identify any potential conflict of interest with items on the agenda tonight. Is, are there any to report? Seeing none, we'll proceed with the minutes. Uh, I'd accept the motion to approve the Planning Commission minutes from November 10th. So moved. Second. We have motion a motion. to approve, Boren. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is items for discussion and possible action. Uh, item 3.1 is a discussion and potential action on public input procedures. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have two hearings on the agenda for this meeting. I would move to open the floor for public comments with the following instructions. Public comment will be limited to three minutes per person as identified in the public notice. A speaker cannot yield their time to another speaker. Comments and suggestions need to pertain to the agenda item under consideration. Personal criticism of individuals is out of order. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Aye. O opposed? Motion passes. In order to allow everyone to speak at the hearing safely, given the COVID-19 environment we're in, we've allowed hearing participants to also participate on the virtual GoToMeeting platform and permitted the submission of written testimony, drawings, and maps in addition to the normal in-person presentation that occurs in City Hall at a public hearing. This written testimony is attached to each agenda item in the City Board Docs program, and a link to that information was forwarded to the members of the City Planning Commission prior to this meeting. We will first allow attendees who are in City Hall in person to speak at this hearing, and due to the social distancing, we could not accommodate everyone in the council chambers, so we have um, people in various conference rooms of City Hall. When we begin the hearing, speakers in the council chambers will go first, and then we will go from room to room to allow other individuals who have signed up to speak to do so. The speakers will stay in that conference room and make their presentation, which will be shared with the commissioners via the GoToMeeting platform that's operating in that conference room. 
I will identify the speaker who is up next and the speaker who is on deck so they can be ready when it's their time to speak. There are microphones in the ceiling and a camera on the wall of each of the conference rooms. After the in-person attendees have made their presentation, I will call on the participants attending this meeting virtually who have signed up to speak per the information in the public notice. If you did not sign up and would like to be recognized to speak, please enter your name in the chat and be sure that it's shared with all participants. Please keep your microphone on mute until you're called on to be on deck. And at that time, please unmute and prepare to be called to speak when the next speaker is finished. At the beginning of your presentation, please give us your name, address, and the municipality of your residence. I thank everyone for their assistance. Please be aware that this is a public meeting and those on the link may be able to be seen or heard not only by those in the room, but others on the GoToMeeting link, but also on Sheboygan's cable channel because this meeting is being broadcast live as the presiding officer of the meeting, I have the responsibility to maintain a level of decorum and to prevent inappropriate activity on the link during the meeting. Please keep your microphone muted when it's not your turn to speak. This includes after your time to speak has run and you have been informed of such. If you fail to mute, I do, not, I do have the option of muting you or removing you from the call. I will not remove people simply for failure to mute unless they repeat and uh, clearly intentional offenders. However, the noise in the link can be even more disruptive than the noise in the room, and it can prevent everyone from hearing and understanding the points being made. Repeated violations may result from your removal from the GoToMeeting link. Inappropriate behavior on the GoToMeeting link is not permitted. Any audio or video that includes sexually explicit material, racist material, hate speech, vulgarity, or inappropriate language, and, in, and any other clearly inappropriate behavior may result in your, being, your audio and video being muted and your removal from the link. This meeting is also being recorded and will be available on WSCS's website as soon after meeting as possible. Please understand that during a hearing, the City Planning Commission does not engage in discussion or answer questions. This time is devoted to listening to your comments on the agenda item that's under consideration. It's our hope that everyone will be orderly and allow the voices to be heard so that the Planning Commission can make its determination pursuant to the best information and according to law. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may, those of you that are on the commission, if you can please buzz in if you would like to speak because they're having uh, voice issues in other conference rooms. So if you want to speak, you have to make sure your mic is on. Okay. The, first, uh, the next item is item 3.2, an application for a conditional use permit with exceptions by Elmendorf Properties, LLC, to operate progressive beginnings from the existing facility located at 1125 North 13th Street. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Actually, can you start with Steve? Pardon me? Can you start with Steve? Steve, please go ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Um, John Elmendorf is here from Elmendorf uh, Properties, LLC, and with progressive beginnings. <clears throat> Uh, Plan Commission might be aware that um, on December of 2020, uh, Mr. Elmendorf had proposed to rezone the property, uh, the old Salvation Army daycare property at 1125 North 13th Street from urban industrial to urban commercial. And so the council recently approved that rezoning. And now Mr. Elmendorf is back here uh, proposing to operate progressive beginnings from uh, the 1125 North 13th Street property. Basically, they're taking out, uh, proposing to remodel and update the current floor plan for pediatric services, such as outpatient, occupational, physical, and speech therapy clinic. Approval of the conditional use permit would allow progressive, progressive beginnings the opportunity to grow in uh, Sheboygan. Uh, John and Nicole Elmendorf had uh, started with two employees, and the uh, progressive beginning has grown to 10. So this proposal will allow progressive beginnings to, again, uh, grow within the city of Sheboygan. So it's a uh, business that started within the city, and John is here today hoping to continue to grow within the city of Sheboygan at this site. Um, progressive Beginnings is an energetic uh, uh, 
dedicated and passionate team comprised of people who are ready to support uh, people's therapeutic journeys. Their team is compromised of occupational and physical therapists. In Sheboygan, they specialize in treating patients with chronic pain and pediatric patients. They offer only, uh, the only warm water aqua, aqua aquatic therapy pool in Sheboygan County, and they start with an approach of understanding the unique situation and goals of each individual, and they work with you to achieve optimum well-being. Um, the applicant has talked about potentially doing some site improvements, uh, some parking and other improvements. At this point in time, there isn't anything shown, and we've kind of talked a little bit about that. If they come in uh, with such improvements, they would come back to the plan commission. Um, I believe that, uh, and, and we can ask Mr. Elmendorf, but the idea is down the line they might look to do some additional parking. They are uh, asking for an exception. Presently, there are eight parking spaces at the site, and that's what they're requesting. And and so it appears that the former Salvation Army daycare, daycare building, which has been vacant, is uh, a, a nice site for progressive beginnings for that occupational and physical therapy clinic. And it appears to be a good use that fits in well with this mixed-use neighborhood. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you. The applicants here, I'm not sure if there's anyone else here for this, Mayor. Thank you for that report, Steve. Mr. Elmendorf, would you like to make any presentation? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as you can see from the drawing, the, the building is already set up pretty much for the therapy that we want to do. Um, and one of the, I guess, ironic things about this building is it's the clinic that my wife had her first job in Sheboygan in uh, when we moved here back in 1996. So the, when this clinic came up for sale, we just kind of looked at it with all the other stressors and bad things that were going on in 2020. We've leased and rented. We actually bought some property from the city some 12 years ago and thought about building at that time, and it just wasn't the right time for us to do it. And we really feel like with all the things that have happened, this really will solidify us in Sheboygan County and in Sheboygan and allow us to grow to a company of over 20 therapists. With the new hospital coming, with the changes in healthcare that we've seen over this year, and also the addition of the uh, charter school right across the street on 13th Avenue there, it's gonna be a perfect position for our therapy clinic and it's really gonna help beautify that area and bring it back to what it should have been and what it will be. So that's where we're at. Thank you for that presentation. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Seeing I have one uh, one question, Mayor. Please Alderman go ahead. Warren. Please go uh, ahead. Mr. Elmendorf, I noticed when I was reading over the uh, application uh, that uh, I was just wondering if you have any, any immediate plans for the east side of the building. You're referring to the open space up top? Uh, we're hoping to turn that into a, it's a, it's an open plot, I'm assuming, is what you're referring to. Uh, we're, yes. We're, Right now it has a playground system for special needs children, probably under the age of seven. Uh, what we're actually looking to do, and you can see the green space on the screen there, we're actually going to look to repurpose that into an a older child playground system area as well. Maybe offering things that we can do for special needs children outside, such as a zip line, such as a climbing wall, trampoline. Uh, you guys may have all heard one of the big topics right now is what they call children on the spectrum. So you have different autism, type of spectrums that are out there. Sensory input, sensory integration is a huge, huge need. By having this extra space, it will allow us to do activities that the child can replicate at home versus just being in the clinic. So yeah, to the east of the property, we're gonna build special needs areas for outdoor play equipment so that we can teach the children to use the wonderful parks that we have in Sheboygan outside of just ours. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I would make a motion to approve subject to staff, staff recommendations. Thank you very much, Alderperson Bourne. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion on the motion? <laughs> Could someone please turn their microphone off and mute that? Roll call. <laughs> Roll call, Mayor Vandersteen. Aye. Older person born? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. And Don Sfitan? Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Thank Good you. luck with your project. It sounds great. Appreciate your work in Sheboygan. Thank you so much. Yep. Item 3.2 is an application 
uh, rather 3.3 is a preliminary plat approval for Koppelman Estates in the town of Sheboygan and extraterritorial zoning plat review. Steve. I believe um, Ross Warner is on line from Warner Homes. Um, as the plan commission is aware, uh, the city of Sheboygan has uh, extraterritorial platting rights, so any areas within three miles of the city limits uh, has to receive approval from the city as well as far as uh, the towns. In this particular instance, we're taking a look at Coppelman Estates, which is a six-lot subdivision, and it's located off of County Highway Y and Grote Road. Um, oftentimes we're taking a look at it from a city perspective. Are there any transportation improvements? Is there anything in the area that would be of concern? And in this particular case, there is none. So staff was recommending approval of the Permanent Plat as proposed. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Commissioners, do you have any questions or motions? Jerry Jones. I uh, move to approve subject to staff recommendations. I'll second it. And a second from uh, Mr. Sveeten. That motion is before us. Is there any further discussion on the motion for approval? Seeing none, the planner please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen. Aye. Alderperson Bourne. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Don Sveetan. Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Next item is item 3.4, an application for a condition to use permit with exceptions by the Kohler Company to construct a new golf course on Kohler Company property that's located north of Kohler Andre State Park between Black River and Lake Michigan. Uh, for this one, we'll start out with a presentation by the applicant. If they'd like to step up to the podium. Dirk Willis, uh, Kohler Company, uh, 444 Highland Drive, Kohler, Wisconsin. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, we're excited to be here today. Today is an opportunity for us to take that next step uh, towards building the first world-class, world-ranked golf course in the city of Sheboygan. And the timing could not be more ideal for us, the Kohler Company, the city of Sheboygan, and the entire state of Wisconsin. It'll help us maximize the benefits of the world's eyes being on all of us as the Ryder Cup approaches. Had it not been for COVID-19 and the subsequent postponement of the Ryder Cup, we had hoped to be here sooner in front of you. But now the time has come and we must take advantage of this opportunity. The tremendous media attention and promotion leading up to and during the Ryder Cup, the single biggest event in golf and one of the most exciting TV events in all of sports, serves as the perfect springboard to promote the partnership between the city of Sheboygan and the Kohler Company in bringing another globally renowned golf destination to the area. That's why we're here today, to work with you on those next steps, the, the decisions that the city has already made in support of the project, and we hope to move forward. Next slide, please. So why does a world-ranked golf course makes sense in this property. You'll hear statements today about golf's decline, and it's simply not true. Golf is a growing sport. Sorry, next slide. Next slide. Just a second. Golf is a growing sport, and we at Kohler Company and Kohler Golf are growing. We're already recognized as one of the top golf destinations in the United States, and in the last four years, we've seen record rounds and record profits each year. Specifically in our, our part of the market, the luxury destination market, we are beating our competition. And this is the opportunity to take advantage of that, to take advantage of the increase in demand of our products with another golf course on level with the existing golf courses at Destination Kohler. This golf course is essential to our future growth. And golf participation in the U.S. is also growing. It's not just, just Kohler Company. This fact is supported by the graph on, sorry, let, go back one slide. <clears throat> just a second, let me get this. One screen. right in the middle of it. Hold tight. Oh, no, I lost it completely. It, it's a problem with two screens. The one with the graph, the... 
Next slide. There you go. That's all right. So the graph on this slide shows the fact, uh, shows data by the National Golf Foundation showing that golf has actually grown 10% in participation since 2014. From 2014-18, we've seen that growth, and in 2018, over 33.5 million Americans participated in the sport, and that number's been continuing to grow. In the last two years, the industry in the United States has seen 1.5% growth in rounds in 2019, and this year, despite early closures due to the pandemic, golf was still able to realize a growth of 7.5% in rounds year over year. That, is, that tells you that golf is growing. Next slide, please. Why does a world-class, world-ranked golf course make sense? This demand illustrates it. And it also has an opportunity to increase the unique draws to the area while also delivering positive economic impacts to the area and to the city. As illustrated by golf's popularity during this unprecedented time, golf is uniquely aligned to take advantage of the growing trends in the travel and recreation industry in a post-COVID uh, marketplace. Travelers are, are searching and looking for an opp opportunity for sanctuary and remote experiences, something that golf can provide. They're also looking for natural and outdoor entertainment environments, something that golf naturally provides. And an increased focus on active and well staying healthy, choosing wellness experiences, also aligns with golf's mission. Golf is part of that wellness story. And lastly, Kohler's commitment to creating memorable experiences that draw national and international attention can only serve to enhance the abundant tourism resources that the city already has. That is why a world-class, world-ranked golf course in the city of Sheboygan makes sense. Next slide, please. There are also other benefits to the city of Sheboygan. I can't reiterate enough, this will be the first world-class, world-ranked golf course in the city of Sheboygan. That permanently aligns the city of Sheboygan with the Destination Kohler Golf brand, a world-renowned brand. The unique set, this unique setting of this property along Lake Michigan is also an ideal environment to build such a, such a course. It provides an opportunity to open private land for the public's enjoyment, not just for golfers, but also with a public restaurant, bar, retail shop, an observation tower for non-golfers to enjoy on, enjoy on a daily basis. It's also the likely, likely the last Pete Dye design golf course ever to be built. The late Mr. Dye, who passed away earlier this year and is a member of the World Golf Hall of Fame, is revered by the golfing public. Kohler Company, along with this, the county, uh, already has, is fortunate to have four world-class uh, designs, some of his best, to attract a global golf audience. A new Pete Dye design will draw diehards, a popular name for his countless fans worldwide, to experience this new destination. While Pete's no longer with us, we will rely on his trusted golf course construction and, de and design protégés to bring his design to life. There's also economic benefits to the city, and they're substantial. In a third-party economic impact study done by S.B. Friedman, the estimated it estimated the city would benefit during construction by adding 68 full-time equivalent jobs with an additional 124 full-time equivalent jobs added once the golf course operation begins. Estimated revenues from the golf course operations would generate approximately $1.3 million in tax revenue annually with 300, about 300,000 of that going to the city. By all accounts, we at the Kohler Company feel these estimates are on the conservative side. Since they are based on round numbers and revenue projections that are less than 45% of our current business levels at Whistling Straits, which is our initial internal benchmark for the operations of this golf course. Next slide. The city's 2011 comprehensive plan classifies this property as public parks and open space. The property abuts the state park on the south, to the south. As the purpose of parks and, and golf courses share some common goals, including providing and encouraging the enjoyment of the outdoors, there's, there are many examples of golf courses coexisting within or adjacent to parks at the local, county, and state level. And in particular, this property is no different. 
as Riverdale has existed for decades less than a half mile to the north. As illustrated on these previous slides, the golf course would help to serve further and further promote the city's economic, economic tourism and reputational goals. And the last point, which is very important, this development ensures that 94% of this land remains permanently protected green space. Next slide. Hidden from sight from its nearest neighbors, approximately 1,000 to 2,000 feet from County Road V, and over 600 feet on the south from uh, State Park access, it is not visible to most of the surrounding areas. It's also important to note that under the existing zoning of SR5, this property could have been developed into a subdivision where there'd be up to five houses per acre. A development, so a development that does not require a conditional use permit would create a significant disturbance to the area's neighboring properties with the construction of hundreds of homes. The golf course, as an alternative, uh, alternative, is a much less impactful for the development of, a, of the property. Next slide. So we're here today to take the next step forward in this partnership to make the golf course, world-class golf course in the city of Sheboygan a reality. And a lot has been accomplished so far, including the pre annexation and development agreement between the city and Kohler Company, which not only details the intent of the city and the Kohler Company to work together on the details of the, of the golf course development, but also details the agreed upon extensions of utilities to facilitate future development by the city. The annexation agreement was approved by the city in 2017 and was unanimously upheld by the Supreme Court, Wisconsin Supreme, Supreme Court in February of 2020, as well as the rezoning of the property at SR5 also in 2017. So today, your endorse, endorsement of the conditional use, uh, conditional use permit implements the decisions that have been made over the last three years, allowing the Kohler Company and the city of Sheboygan to move this dream forward and take advantage of the once in a lifetime opportunity to celebrate making this dream a reality with the entire eyes of the golfing world on us as the Ryder Cup approaches. Next slide. So over the last several years, we've worked diligently to ensure this world-class destination is designed and built in a responsible manner. The efforts resulted in Kohler Company obtaining all necessary permits, which we are currently defending in the courts. Our approved design accounted for changing conditions, including variable lake levels. So on this slide, you'll see a picture of an example of those conditions along the lakeshore of the property. This picture was taken yesterday. And it shows that there's ample beach and substantial vegetation along the eastern border of the property. Exhibits eight and nine of the conditional use permit application contain more than a sufficient amount of information to accurately show that the natural resource protection areas, including the city's lakeshore overlay, are, are available. Even maps submitted by others today will show you that, which we think are overstated, um, or overstate the lakeshore overlay, show only vegetative cover within the exaggerated areas of their overlay, overlay area. We understand and acknowledge the work ahead of us in resolving the lawsuits. We will continue to defend the permits we rightfully obtain. To assist our efforts, we are requesting the city a tolling of the conditional use permit timelines to assist in resolving these lawsuits. And this is very important to us to move forward with the, protect, with the project in a timely manner. Once the aforementioned lawsuits are resolved, we need to begin construction immediately to ensure that both the city and the Kohler Company can take advantage of the growth and popularity of our golf destinations. The more slif, swiftly we can move forward, the greater benefit to us both. And lastly, we understand that these resolved permits uh, being in place will be a condition, will all be conditions of the conditional use permit. Next slide. So in closing, it's important, it's an important day in making the first world-class world-ranked golf course in the city of Sheboygan reality. And I have no doubt that once built, it will help secure Sheboygan's place as the number one golf destination in the United States. The Kohler Company greatly appreciates the partnership the city has provided in this effort today. I mean, we greatly appreciate the time of the Planning Commission in reviewing this application. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for that presentation. Next, I'll turn it over to Steve Sokolowski for a report on this application. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. Everyone's going to have to bear with me here. We got a little bit of information to share. So, um, as was mentioned, the Kohler Company seeks to develop an 18 hole championship caliber public golf course, a clubhouse, support enemies, amenities on approximately 250 acres of private land owned by Kohler. The project creates a unique opportunity to open private property for public enjoyment and recreational use, enhance Sheboygan County's reputation as one of the world's premier golf destinations, create jobs and benefit the local economy, and at the same time preserve and enhance many of the property's environmental features and attributes for the long term. The goal of the project is to develop a golf course that is rated in the top 50 golf courses in the world. The property is located between the Black River and Lake Michigan, north and east of the John Michael Kohler and Terry Andre State Park in the city of Sheboygan. Kohler acquired a total of approximately 468 acres in the vicinity during the 1930s. In 1965, Kohler donated 221 acres to the state of Wisconsin for the creation of John Michael Kohler <coughs> State Park. The remaining 250-acre parcel retained by Kohler has remained in private ownership and is uniquely uh, suited for the premier 18 whole golf course you see before you today. Um, several structures are, are part of the proposal. The clubhouse and other amenities are centrally located. Cart Pass will be constructed in conjunction with the golf holes to provide course access. A caddy cart barn and two on-course rest stations will also be constructed on the property as required by the golf course amenities. A practice range is planned to be built in the south portion and a pond is planned to be in the northern portion of the property. The clubhouse is a multi-level clubhouse and it will be erected on the property that encompasses a minimalist design elements and concepts. The first floor level will be approximately 8,800 square foot. Uh, these uh, uh, drawings are in exhibit 14. Uh, the multi-level clubhouse will be erected on the property that encompasses a minimalist design. It'll be approximately 8,800 square feet and include the pro shop, restaurant, bar, banquet room, and locker rooms. The banquet facility will be capable of hosting indoor, outdoor, special events, and weddings. The lower level basement will be approximately 7,900 square feet and contain administrative offices, receiving areas, mechanical equipment, and a kitchen, bar, and storage areas. The proposed exterior building material, materials for the clubhouse well, walls consist of a decorative timber columns, canvas materials, and a cordwood wall on the portion of the east elevation. Kohler is also looking at doing an observation tower. A Lake Michigan observation tower will be located adjacent to the clubhouse and contain a viewing platform approximately 60 feet above the surrounding grade with an overall height of 80 feet to the top of the structure. An open wood frame stair with multiple landings will provide access to the platform. The viewing platform will be covered by a gable roof structure with seamed metal roofing. There are also some maintenance buildings that will be constructed. Maintenance needs of the golf course will be served from two buildings located on the south side of the property and adjacent to the existing state park maintenance facility. The primary maintenance building will be approximately 15,000 square feet and contain offices, heated storage, and heated repair facilities. The secondary building is approximately 7,600 square feet and contains an equipment wash facility, storage, mixing, and unheated equipment spaces. Approximately an eight foot high buffering wood fence is proposed around the perimeter of the proposed maintenance building and pavement areas, and the maintenance buildings would be screened with vegeta uh, vegetation from the entrance road. The proposed maintenance building include a mix of decorative concrete block, metal wall panels, and metal roof panels. In addition, there will be a caddy cart storage buildings and rest stations. The caddy uh, cart storage building is approximately 7,500 square feet. It's proposed to be located on the west of the clubhouse. The building is the staging location for caddies along the storage of guest, services, guest service golf carts. The caddy cart storage building would be screened by vegetation from the guests and the caddy uh, structure will consist of a metal wall panel and metal roof panels. Uh, 
In addition, two on uh, course rest stations will be constructed to provide restroom facilities along with food and beverage services. The hours of operation for the golf course, uh, the golfing season begins in the spring and extends through the fall depending on local weather conditions. The daily hours for golf play vary with the seasons but typically begin at dawn and end at dusk. The in-season restaurant hours are daily from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. with extended bar service, as is common. At the, close of the golf at the close of the golf season until New Year's holiday, the restaurant bar is currently planned to be open Thursday through Saturday with hours of operation from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. The restaurant bar, along with the pro shop, is currently planned to be closed during the off-season from January to the start of the golf season. The proposed golf course is anticipated to attract approximately 380 daily visitors for golf and non-golf activities during peak times. Approximately 102 employees during peak times are anticipated, including caddies, golf course maintenance, food and beverage, retail, golf operations, and support staff. Um, the access to the property is being proposed through the existing state park entrance on Beach Park Lane, located along County Highway V. The primary <clears throat> guest and associate parking will be accommodated in a paved parking lot containing approximately 181 stalls located near the clubhouse, with an additional 32 stalls dedicated for maintenance staff adjacent to the maintenance uh, buildings. Traffic impact analysis, so you can uh, take a look at this on exhibits five and six. Access to the property is being proposed through the existing state park entrance on Beach Park Lane, located along County Highway V. Numerous alternative entrance routes to the property were evaluated, resulting in a proposed route that has the least impact on both the neighbors and the environment. Access through the residential neighborhoods to the north was investigated, but was not recommended due to the traffic impacts to the area residents. Multiple routes originating off 12th Street through the state park were also invested, investigated but determined more environmentally impactful than the route being proposed. A traffic study was completed and concludes that the study intersections are currently built to significantly exceed accepted Institute of Transportation Engineers level of service standards. Uh, while no traffic Im improvements are required, Kohler is proposing to uh, modify the state park entrance area by adding a roundabout east of the existing bridge spanning the Black River to further improve circulation. The roundabout design includes three dedicated lanes for entering the state park visitors, while golf course traffic and existing state park visitors would utilize the roundabout. Uh, XL Engineering has completed an updated traffic analysis to reflect the um, proposed roundabout entrance at the Kohler Andre State Park and Golf Course. It should be noted that uh, the original 2015 traffic uh, study that was done uh, indicated that uh, movements at the intersection of County V and Beach Park Lane were uh, demonstrated in that original traffic improvement and to operate at a service level of B or better. And those levels of service are ranked like A through uh, D. So B obviously is a, a high standard. Uh, looking at the improvements proposed for with regards to the roundabout, the level of service of the proposed roundabout was calculated assuming the peak hour for the state park occurs at the same time as the peak hours for the golf course. This is a very conservative approach that will re represent a worst case scenario. Based upon that analysis, the overall level of service for the roundabout during these peak hours is a level of service A, all individual movements within the roundabout are also rated at a level of service of A. In addition to the level of service analysis for the roundabout, the queuing provided for the DNR station in the proposed configuration was compared with the queuing provided in the existing intersection. The existing intersection has two lanes that provides 516 feet of total vehicle queuing length. The proposed intersection includes four lanes. One lane is dedicated for the golf course traffic. The three remaining lanes are dedicated to the state park entrance. This combined queuing length of three lanes provided for the state park entrance is a 711 feet, and this is a 38% in, uh, increase over the existing conditions. And there's the possibility that the DNR could uh, 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 look at a new automated sticker dispenser, which would also uh, significantly improve access to the park. 
applicant states some information in terms of landscaping that's uh, uh, to be installed and to be preserved. Project will place a high value on the landscape integrity and aesthetics landscape variation and interspersion of native vegetation, long views within the property and to the lakeshore vista and natural appearing topography. Incorporating these landscape features will enhance the visual and aesthetics features of the property. The lakeshore and its views will be integrated into the golf course design. The project will create gaps in the forest canopy and increase sight distances through the property. Greater variations in the landscape, open areas contrasted with forest areas will add to the scenic interest to the current landscape. The, the distinctive undulating dune topography largely will be retained. With regards to infrastructure, um, based on preliminary discussions with utility providers, gas, electric, communications, it's anticipated that the service connections will be extended from the existing facilities along county Trunk Highway V right away. Um, Kohler will also install water lateral from South 12th Street at Stall Road to the clubhouse, caddy, barn, and to the northern pond. Upon completion of the water main extension of, on South 12th Street by the city of Sheboygan, the lateral will be connected to the municipal water system, and this will avoid the need for a high capacity well, thereby mitigating a concern of people who are concerned that such a well could have negative environmental impacts and reduce the capacity of existing private wells in the area that do not yet have benefits of municipal water. An existing well on the Kohler property will be utilized during the initial construction for irrigation until the water main improvements are completed. The clubhouse, the caddy barn, will connect to the municipal sewer system currently located on Timberlake Drive to the north. On course, rest stations will have a private septic system and or holding tank to serve the sanitary, uh, sanitary sewer needs along, the private well, uh, uh, along with private wells for potable water. Um, <coughs> In addition, uh, the applicant has submitted some information on the natural resource uh, site evaluation of the zoning ordinance. Kohler has applied for a conditional use permit for an outdoor institutional use and more specifically for a privately owned golf course and for clear cutting in connection with the conditional use application, Kohler has submitted a detailed site analysis to identify permanently protected green space areas in the proposed golf mart development. This report constitutes the written evaluation from city staff related to the submitted detailed site analysis and Kohler's natural resource site evaluation worksheet and detailed map have been accepted by city uh, staff. In addition, there uh, are uh, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Army Corps of Engineers, and other jurisdictional approvals. Um, as set forth in the Natural Resource Protection Regulations of the Zoning Ordinance, uh, the, our, our um, uh, protections and regulations are intended to supplement those of the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, the State of Wisconsin, and the Federal Government of the United States, recognizing that the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have specialized expertise and jurisdiction over permitted related to various natural resources. The City's application of its natural resource protection regulations shall be subject to and conditioned upon and automatically adjusted to conform to and any uh, and any and all permits required from and issued by those state and federal authorities with jurisdiction over the property. Um, the city uh, of Sheboygan zoning order ordinance identifies the purpose of the SR vote F's, the suburban residential zoning district as intended to permit development which has a moderate density suburban community character. A single family housing development with a minimum of 6,000 square foot lots and a maximum gross density of five dwelling units per acre is permitted by right. The proposed golf course is a land use allowed as a conditional use in the suburban residential zone and that's why the applicant has the ability to apply for this conditional use permit today. There are a couple of exemptions that the applicant is looking for uh, with regards to the zoning ordinance. One is the observation tower height exceedance. Uh, height exceedance is being requested in conjunction with the conditional use application to uh, authorize the taller observation tower. 
a curb adjacent to landscape areas exception. Uh, the paved parking areas will not be visible from the public right-of-way. An exception is being requested to avoid the use of curb adjacent to the landscape areas, maintaining the existing rural setting in the state park. Fight, uh, fence height exceedance at the proposed maintenance facilities. An eight-foot high fence is proposed around the maintenance facility. The fence will be wood and decorative in nature, and there is exceedance for the proposed fencing is being requested for security, safety, and screening. Maintenance building setback exceedance. An exceedance is being requested for required setbacks of the maintenance building from a residentially zoned property. The property adjacent to the proposed maintenance building is the Kohler Andre State Park facility and is also zoned residentially. The actual use for this area by Kohler Andre State Park is also a maintenance facility and activity, making the proposed golf course maintenance facility ideally located next to the same exact uh, uh, identical use by the park. The requested minimum setback is for a maintenance building uh, is 25 feet in lieu of the 50 foot setback. An exceedance for outdoor recreational area setback an exceedance is also being requested for the number seven T's located within 50 feet of the adjacent Kohler Andre State Park. Um, the zoning ordinance stipulates a 50 foot setback for actively used outdoor recreational areas from residentially zoned property. Similar to the previous uh, uh, setback exceedance, uh, the uh, a Kohler is requesting that because of uh, the property next door is zoned residential, but is the Kohler Andre State Park and it is used as well by the park for their maintenance facility. <clears throat> Uh, an accept, uh, pavement setback and access points. An exception, an exception is being requested from the pavement setback requirement to allow two access points. The point where the entrance road first enters Kohler County or Kohler Company property near the proposed maintenance building and the proposed access drive to the existing park maintenance facility. To accommodate the initial golf course construction, a conditional use permit is also being requested for removal of more than 50% of the woodlands on the property. While Kohler may need to cut more than 50% of the existing woodlands on the property to, to develop its course, when developed, Kohler golf course will permanently preserve 94% of the property or approximately 238 acres as green space and will provide 220% of the landscaping uh, points that are required by the city's ordered ordinance. How does the golf course meet the goals and objectives of the city of comprehensive plan? The, city's, uh, the priority of the city's comprehensive plan includes sustainable economic growth and job creation as well as enhancing the quality of life within the city. The plan's key initiative range from enhancing the lakefront and riverfront, continuing to improve high quality public services, to continue to advance its tradition of rich arts, cultural facilities, and events. The plan calls for improving the, improving the Sheboygan brand and improving residents' perception of their city. The plan also encourages the enhancement of the lakefront and the riverfront properties to attract new development, appeal to res residents, and to facilitate a healthy community. The plan's guiding pr principles include building self-sustaining economy, capitalizing on Lake Michigan, and cultivating cultural assets. The project proposed by Kohler advances many of these properties, initi priorities, initiatives, and guiding principles. Economic growth and job creation will occur, and indeed in the Supreme Court noted in the town of Wilson uh, the that the annexation was a means for the city to achieve its goal of economic growth. In addition, a new high quality recreational amenity will be provided with this conditional use permit. And for the first time, one of the county's premier golf courses will actually be located within the borders of the city, improving, improving the city's brand. With its late Michigan vistas, rolling topography, and unique natural features, the property offers an unparalleled setting for a spectacular forest and lakefront golf experience. The layout of this golf course will incorporate existing trees and dunes as well as natural topography into the design to minimize site disturbance. The proposed course, together with the Kohler's other champion golf courses in the area, will maintain and build the reputation of Sheboygan County as one of the premier golf destinations in the world. The future land use map included in the city's comprehensive plan um, 
and its comprehensive outdoor recreation plan classifies the property as public parks and open space. The public parks and open space categories includes public golf courses, making the property the ideal location for a golf course as it relates to the city in terms of its comprehensive planning. The opportunity to open up approximately 250 acres of private property for public enjoyment and recreational use adjacent to the existing state park provides a tremendous benefit and is similar to uh, Peninsula State Park located in Door County. Here, private land will become accessible for the general public, not just for golf, but also uh, to the practice facilities, clubhouse, restaurants, and bar. The city's comprehensive plan also classifies the property as public parks and open space. The public parks and open space category includes golf courses, making the property a deal, uh, location for the golf course and will enhance the city as an attractive tourism desti destination with a world-class golf course with a Sheboygan moniker. Um, Alpkin talks about a number of the different benefits from an economic standpoint. I'm just uh, the economic impact study by S.B. Friedman, development advisor, estimates the new golf course will generate nearly $20 million in annual economic output for the state of Wisconsin and create 227 full-time jobs within the state, 124 in the city of Sheboygan once operational. So there are several um, uh, benefits economic and I maybe leave that to the applicant to speak to. In conclusion, the city of Sheboygan annexed the property on August 7, 2017, and in a unanimous decision of Town of Wilson versus uh, the city of Sheboygan, the uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court upheld that annexation. The Supreme Court found in the Town of Wilson that the city had planned for years to develop and expand the Kohler proposal, to develop and expand, and the Kohler proposal provides the opportunity to do so. The city zoned the property suburban, resi suburban residential, and the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for an outdoor institutional land use, and more specifically, a privately owned public golf course, clear cutting, and associated ancillary, ancillary land uses described in the application. The proposed golf course fulfills priorities, initiatives, and guiding principles of the city's comprehensive plan and balances growth and density allowed in the suburban residential zone. Kohler, uh, Kohler has designed its course to maximize area benefits and to minimize ancillary impacts. During the due diligence and design phases of the project, 16 course layouts and seven entrance routes alternatives were identified, characterized, and evaluated. The proposed course layout and entrance routes were determined to be the least impactful to both the environment and to the neighbors. Investigations that were completed for the analysis included wetlands delineations, stormwater management, management analysis, rare species surveys, botanical surveys, traffic studies, and archaeological surveys. Initial project planning for the proposed golf course began in early 2014. The, very, the various processes involved with local, state, and federal approvals have included many opportunities for Kohler, Kohler to gain public feedback and address many of the concerns that have been raised. Over 20 forums, including public comment periods and public hearings and meetings, have been held to date to solicit community feedback. Modifications to the plans have been made based on the feedback. Kohler's construction and operations of the golf course will be subject to complicated and comprehensive of regulatory fame framework. All necessary permits and regulations as administered by the appropriate regulatory agencies having jurisdiction and acts of expertise will be deemed conditions to any conditional uh, permit issued by the city of Sheboygan. So lastly, the opportunity to open the approximately 250 acres of private property for public enjoyment and recreational use adjacent to the existing state park provides a, tr a tremendous benefit similar to Peninsula State Park in Door County. Um, Park users and the general public will also have access to practice facilities, clubhouse, restaurant, and bar. The economic benefits of a new public course are measured in, in more than just recreation and business travel dollars. Benefits begin with millions of dollars of planning, design, and construction works. Once constructed, a course creates jobs with the state and local income, uh, including sales and property taxes. In addition, a new public golf course and championship caliber golf course in particular has a multiplier effect, infusing wages and benefits to circulate throughout the local economy, increasing property values and ancillary public and private benefits. 
Again, an economic impact by S.C. Friedman estimates the courts will generate $20 million, in, uh, $20 million in annual economic output for the state of Wisconsin and creation of 227 jobs within the state. Wisconsin is recognized as a Gulf Mecca. In its October 2017 edition, Gulf Magazine ranked Wisconsin as the third ranked golf destination in the world behind Scotland and Ireland. The proposed golf course will enhance the state of Wisconsin, Sheboygan County, and the city of Sheboygan as one of the premier golf destinations in, uh, in the country. So other than that, um, uh, there were a number of uh, the, the, basically, as part of the hearings process, staff had encouraged those members of the public who may be concerned about uh, appearing at the public hearing to give, uh, based on corona, to submit written comments. All of, uh, a number of letters, both for and against the project, have been submitted for the plan commission's review. Um, so those were on there, and we'll hear testimony in a, in a few minutes from uh, the members of the public. Uh, lastly, uh, the Kohler Company has submitted an application that appropriately addresses the requirements of the conditional use permit and provides justifications for the exceptions requested. In addition, the application addresses many of the City of Sheboygan comprehensive plan goals, objectives, and vision to be a diverse and prosperous coastal community. Based on that, staff recommends approval of the conditional use permit and exceptions subject to the following conditions. And Mayor, would you like me to read those at this point in time as well? Please. So there are a number of conditions. The first condition, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall obtain all license permits as well as meet all required codes, including but not limiting to building, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, fire, water, sewer, storm drainage, uh, federal state of Wisconsin. An occupancy permit will be granted only at such time as the applicant has met those requirements. The applicant has submitted a proposed landscape plan as Exhibit 13 of its application. That submittal has not been yet reviewed. If the plan is approved by the manager of planning and zoning, the applicant shall comply with the plan. If the plan is not approved, the applicant shall resubmit a plan that is acceptable to the manager of planning and zoning. In any case, the applicant shall comply with provisions of the landscape ordinance of the uh, zoning ordinance. The applicant's operation shall comply with uh, section 15.206, uh, subparagraph 3B, 2A, which is outdoor, outdoor public recreations. That's the uh, classification for a uh, golf course. Um, there's certain buffer yards and things, uh, property lines that they have a, uh, a required a, a, an exception for, and so they will meet those requirements as part of that condition. Dumpsters shall be screened and enclosed and constructed of like materials and colors of the building served and shall be complete prior to issuance of an occupancy permit. The applicant shall properly submit to and receive approval from the Director of Public Works for a stormwater management plan in compliance with the city's uh, uh, stormwater management ordinance. Outdoor storage of materials and products or equipment shall be prohibited or completely screened from public view by fencing and landscaping. Any fencing and retaining walls shall meet the sections of the uh, zoning ordinance, except for those granted the exception. Applicant will work with uh, staff with regards to uh, a well-designed fence. Maximum height of the fence is uh, eight feet high. Fence shall be located on the Kohler property and it's applicant's responsibility to know where those lot lines are. All ground level and rooftop mechanicals shall be screened or enclosed and constructed of uh, like materials and colors of the nearest building. All lighting shall be installed per the uh, lighting section of the zoning ordinance. The uses shall meet the performance standards of the uh, zoning ordinance uh, that include, but aren't limited to noise, lighting, vibrate, uh, vibration, except for the exceptions granted. All areas used for parking and maneuvering of licensed vehicles shall be paved. Golf course operation and maintenance vehicles may traverse on gravel or grass throughout the course. All parking areas that are not required to be paved shall be landscaped with grand, uh, grass or appropriate landscaping consistent with the landscape plans. No portion of the buildings or site improvements shall cro uh, cross exterior property lines except those granted as an exception. Applicants shall meet 
the active outdoor public recreation uh, uh, criteria, which states all structures and active recreation all shall be located a minimum of feet, 50 feet from residentially zoned property, except those granted the exception. Applicants shall obtain the necessary sign permits prior to installation and will work with staff with appropriate signage. Applicants shall install individual letters, no cabinet or flat panel signs. Uh, applicants shall uh, be permitted a freestanding monument sign for the site and they'll work with uh, staff with regards to the sign ordinance and the signage. Applicants shall immediately clean any and all sediments, materials, and tracking that may be spilled off site on private or public lands and streets. All vehicle equipment materials products shall be located on the Kohler property, no storage on any public rights way. City development staff will issue a building permit only if applicant has adequately satisfied all applicable municipal regulations in terms of uh, the related to the Sheboygan water utility. City development staff will issue a building permit only if the applicant has adequately installed fire protection measures approved by the city of Sheboygan fire department. Applicant will provide adequate public access along all public streets and take all appropriate actions to minimize the time periods that these will be closed or affected. Applicant is responsible for constructing all required public uh, infrastructure improvements to properly service the site prior to occupancy. Um, as described in the developer's agreement, any work with the city of Sheboygan public rights way shall be discussed with the city engineering department and constructed to standard city specifications. Applicant is responsible for all costs associated with the construction and installation of required public improvements for the project as set forth in the agreement. Streets and infrastructure damaged or disturbed during the construction of all private or public improvements shall promptly be repaired. It will be the applicant's responsibility to work with all private and public utilities in order to provide easements and or relocate utilities as necessary. Applicant will take all appropriate actions to minimize the time periods that the adjacent properties are impacted by these developments. Building permits shall only be issued at such time as the applicant has obtained all necessary permits from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Applicants shall meet the 50-foot building setback um, of the city of Sheboygan Shoreland Zoning Ordinance and the 75-foot setback under the Sheboygan County Code. It is the applicant's responsibility to ensure all construction takes place outside of the areas designated as wetlands, and the applicant may only impact these areas designated as wetlands if and only if uh, written documentations, license permits from the DNR permitting them to do so. Building permits shall be issued only at such time the applicant has obtained official approval, documentation permits from the required governmental authorities, including but not limited to the Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Wisconsin State Historical Society, Wisconsin Public Service Commission, Sheboygan County. Building permits shall only be issued at such time as the applicant provide documentation that the lots have been combined into one parcel, parcel which has been officially recorded by Sheboygan County. Prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant is provide, uh, responsible for providing all shared access easement necessary for the golf course development and operation between the Kohler Company and adjoining properties and including but not limited to ingress, egress, shared access utilities. Applicants shall submit plans to the City of, Ar uh, City of Sheboygan Architecture Review Board for review. Building permits shall be issued only at such time the Architectural Review Board has approved the plans. The conditional use permit time limit shall be told for the duration of uh, any lawsuits relating to the golf course project, provided the applicant proceeds to develop the property consistent with the approved conditional use permit and site plan at such at uh, such time as all lawsuits are completed, the conditional use permit time limit shall begin. Applicant shall comply with the terms of the developer's agreement. And, if, and lastly, if there's any amendments to the approved conditional use permit site plan, the applicant will be required to submit a new conditional use application reflecting those amendments. So that's the staff report, Mayor. Thank you very much, Steve. We appreciate your complete report. At this time, uh, I'd like to open it up for the hearing. And uh, the first person in City Hall right now would be uh, Lee uh, Trata and on deck would be Brian Duna. Lee, if you'd please step to the podium. Here. Not here. Doesn't appear that Lee is here. Brian, the floor is yours. And the uh, first person uh, that's being speaking remotely would be Eric Thielen. Eric, if you'd unmute and prepare to speak after uh, Brian Duna is finished. Brian. 
Good afternoon. My name is Brian Doudna. I live at 1227 Hill and Dale Road, Plymouth, Wisconsin, 53073, zip code. I'm the executive director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. The SCEDC continues to support the Kohler uh, Company's proposal to build an 18-hole championship golf course on the 250 acres of privately owned land that was annexed into the city of Sheboygan in August of 2017. We support this project for the following reasons. Cola Company has a strong reputation and track record for delivering world-class products and services, including championship-level golf courses. The property will be a destination for area residents and visitors through uh, property access, constructed amenities, and the proposed observation tower all of which will display our community's amazing physical attributes. It will enhance uh, the state entrance, state park entrance, which is a popular destination for a variety of recreational activities that embrace the natural environment. Cola Company has made modifications to the original project to reduce the impacts to the environment, the neighbors, and state-owned property. According to the economic impact study of the project, will generate 21 million in annual economic output once fully operational. And Cola Company has agreed to a minimum valuation of the project, which will provide property tax revenues for the city and other taxing jurisdictions in excess of $235,000 annually based on your 2019 uh, tax rates. So naturally, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation and its board of directors supports investments and responsible development projects that promote long-term prosperity in, in the county. Therefore, the SCEDC strongly encourages the City of Sheboygan Plan Commission to approve the proposed conditional use permit with the requested extension of time limits. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is uh, is Eric Thielen, and on deck is Dr. Bell Rose Raggins. Eric, the floor is yours. My name is Eric Thielen, and I live at 4933 Evergreen Drive in the town of Wilson. I studied the site plan and noticed that the applicant is still using outdated maps that show the ordinary high water mark during an historically low lake level. Highly variable lake levels have made this site plan unusable. I sent the commission a picture showing the site of the proposed 18th hole in April 2019 and again in January of this year. That green is underwater. To give you an idea of how far out in the lake it is, picture three semi-trailers parked end to end. At least four of the planned greens have been disrupted. And we saw a picture today of the beach and I can tell you the beach continues to come and go changing daily. The applicant today claims that they have moved these greens and fairways inland but that necessarily means filling more wetlands and clear cutting more forest than they have proposed to the DNR. That's a headache you don't want. Go walk the property and see for yourself. And now I'm just gonna say the quiet part out loud. If you approve this version of the CUP, the next thing you'll see is the applicant saying they need revetments along the shore to protect these assets. The applicant is not saying this up front because they know it's a non-starter. I urge the commissioners to send the application back pending resolution of all these court cases and then ask for a timely and complete application. You are entitled to that. There is no need for you to rush. Premature approval of a CUP is in fact likely to invite more litigation, which further delays this project moving ahead. The lack of a CUP is not what's holding up this project. The reason the applicant can't break ground is the same reason they have lost their wetland permit. Namely, reasonable people know that you cannot install high maintenance greens and fairways in a sandy wetland on a very dynamic Great Lakes shoreline. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much for your comments, Eric. Uh, next speaker is gonna be Dr. Uh, Beth Rose Reagans and, and, or Bell Rose Reagans, I'm sorry, and Rose Booth is on deck. Dr. Reagans, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My name is Dr. Bell Rose Reagans. I live at 4933 Evergreen Drive in the town of Wilton. So Kohler claims that their world-class golf course will be open for public enjoyment and use. Public use. 
public use in what universe? Most folks, particularly those from black and brown communities, can't afford to drop four to 500 bucks for an afternoon's worth of entertainment at a luxury golf course or 20 bucks for a burger at a clubhouse. They can't afford a $28 state park sticker that gives them a year's access to Lake Michigan and one of the most beautiful parks in our state. Families can hike and camp and swim in the lake. And this is so important, particularly for inner city kids. But you and I both know that while this course will be a nice amenity to those with money, it will have an adverse impact on callers' neighbors to the south, the state park, and the working and middle class families who enjoy it. Our state park averages about a half a million visitors a year and had unprecedented use this summer because of COVID, but also because camping is an affordable family vacation. But last summer, the park was packed to the gills. People were packed like sardines on the beach. It was hard to find a place. You couldn't even find a place to lay your blanket. But they were still able to escape the crowds and walk north along the lake, along the Cola property, which is their right to walk along the lake shore. If this get, course gets approved, families will no longer be able to walk along the beach because they will face blockades and revetment. <clears throat> So while working and middle-class families struggle to find a place in the sand to lay their blankets, their wealthy neighbors to the north will sip their gin and tonics while enjoying their lakeshore vistas at their luxury public golf course. Wealthy patrons will enjoy peace and quiet while they golf, oblivious to the fact that their industrial lawnmowers roar through the greens every morning, waking neighbors, camping, campers to the crack of dawn, so much for a restful family vacation for those who cannot afford the luxury of the Kohler experience. So let's turn to pesticides and fertilizers. Golf courses need chemicals to maintain their greens. Lots of chemicals. You have the data. You know that because of the sandy soil unique to this property, toxic chemicals will flow directly into Lake Michigan. So this means that families will be swimming in chemicals, not to mention toxic algae blooms. We know what these chemicals do, particularly to our most vulnerable children, pregnant mothers, elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. I don't need to explain the outcomes to you. So the park beach will be closed and the damage will be done. People will need to sue to cover their medical bills. Who will be accountable? So what does this golf course really bring to Sheboygan? A whole lot of sickness and a whole lot of trouble. Why build a course next to a state park? Because Cola wants lake distance for their wealthy patrons. What about the cost to families and residents? Who really benefits from this? Dr. Cost? Reagans, your time is up. Please wrap up your comments. Here. Yes. All right, let me say this plainly. Golf is a white sport. The people who use this course will be wealthy and predominantly white. The people who are making this decision are white, but the people who will be adversely affected are black and brown. This is called systemic racism. Sheboygan talks about valuing diversity and inclusion, but approving this course shows residents that this is just talk. The world is watching. Thank you, Dr. Reagans. Next is Rose Both, and David Cohen is yes. on deck. Rose? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. My name is Rose Both. I'm the uh, political chair of the Sierra Club Great Waters Group, and I'm also on the lands team of Sierra Club Madison. Um, so my concern today is with some of the numbers that we've been hearing and that the Kohler team has presented, namely that there are 250 acres of undeveloped land um, up there north of the park and that at least 238 acres of green space would remain after this was developed as a golf course, or in other words, 94% of the property, preserving the undulating topography um, of the location. I'm wondering how that's possible. Um, that would leave 12 acres on which to develop 18 holes of golf. And um, I think as we know, and Pete Dye probably knew, it takes about 150 acres to create an 18 hole golf course. So I find that a little mind boggling and I just don't understand how that's gonna work out. I also wanna remind people that Kohler's um, Wetlands permit to actually develop this land was revoked by an administrative law judge in 2019, and it hasn't been reinstated um, by the DNR. And finally, the last thing that I wanted to ask was, 
10,000 migrating birds use Kohler Andre Lakeshore in spring and fall every year. 10,000 birds land in that area. Um, what accommodation is going to be made for those migrating birds since this is an important stop for them on their way to Greenland and they have used this area for hundreds of years, just as the area itself, the dunes, are thousands of years old. Um, I think before we build on something um, that's going to destroy an area that's thousands of years old, we ought to know how many acres this golf course is going to take and what is actually going to be left. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, Rose, and I appreciate your comments. Uh, next is David Cohen, and Robert Jansen is on deck. David, please go ahead. Good afternoon, Mayor Vandersteen and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is David Cohen. My address is 1108 North Milwaukee Street, Unit 261 in the city of Milwaukee. And I'm the executive director of the First Chief of Southeast Wisconsin, the youth development organization whose mission is to impact the lives of young people by providing education, educational programs that build character and instill life-enhancing values to the game of golf. I'm speaking today in support of Kohler Company's application for conditional use permit for the proposed golf course. In recognizing the importance and significance of the natural resources on the proposed land, Kohler Company is well positioned to be a caretaker and steward of the land through their construction of a world-class golf facility. Kohler Company's investment in golf within the local community has led to a tremendous positive impact that will only be enhanced by the credit. The ordered construction of this new course will lead to $1 million in economic impact for the state of Wisconsin, 227 full-time equivalent jobs in the state, with 104 of those in Sheboygan, once operational, and over $1 million in estimated city, county, and state tax revenue. This new course will continue to enhance the Sheboygan region and as a global golf tourism destination, a destination that many, including myself, consider the best in the world. Tourism brings dollars uh, that will impact the community well beyond the golf course or company. This course will benefit local businesses, restaurants, and hospitality for years to come. Golf provides a lifetime outdoor activity for people of all ages. For kids, adults, seniors, people of all ages. Back from golf is a game that brings people together, teaches about ourselves and each other. Importantly, Kohler Company uses their facilities to give back to the local community. Hosting junior tournaments and high school golf teams. And numerous charity golf outings each year that have raised thousands of dollars for local nonprofits and the people that they serve. Golf is not just a sport for rich white people. And I invite those in this call to visit one of our first key programs. At the David, thank, thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate it. Next is Robert Jansen with uh, Marcelino Rivera on deck. Robert, please proceed. Good afternoon. My name is Rob Jansen. I live at 7100 Grand Parkway in the city of Wauwatosa, and I'm the executive director of the Wisconsin State Golf Association a 501c6 non for profit formed in 1901 to preserve and promote the game of golf. In my role, I see every day the positive impact golf has on the state and its residents. I fully support the Kohler Company's proposed golf course. Kohler Company has been a longtime supporter of the Wisconsin State Golf Association, as well as our foundation and the entire Wisconsin golf community. Golf has been great for the state, providing over 38,000 jobs, 2.4 billion in economic impact, and, per, and, and attracting a prestigious list of professional golf events, including the upcoming Ryder Cup in 2021. 
The game also promotes an active, healthy lifestyle and is, is enjoyed by juniors through, juniors through seniors, men and women. As the state continues to deal with the effects of COVID-19, golf has been a bright spot, surging in popularity as state residents sought safe, outdoor and physically distanced activities. Golf rounds played in Wisconsin were up 34% in October compared to last year and 16% for the year, despite being shut down for a month in the spring. Golf also gives back and is a key driver of charitable giving in the state with most of that money generated for non-golf causes. The commitment of Kohler Company to the game has played a large role in Wisconsin becoming a premier tourism destination, leading to more new jobs and golfers from around the world visiting Sheboygan County, um, as well as hopefully the city of Sheboygan soon. The Wisconsin Department, Department of Tourism sees the benefits of golf to the state as well as they continue to increase their promotion of the state's golf course, golf courses to visitors around the U.S. and around the world. Finally, I know the Kohler Company will continue their environmentally responsible approach to building and maintaining this golf course as they have done with all of their other courses. The Wisconsin golf industry takes its environmental responsibility very seriously, and, and Kohler Company is a leader in this regard. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, next is Marcelino Rivera, and Gerilyn Liana is on deck. Marcelino? Marcelino doesn't seem to be with us today. Uh, just give you a few minutes if you need to unmute. Okay, then we'll go on to Jerry. What are you asking for? Marcelino? Oh, I'm Gerilyn Leanna. Okay, Gerilyn, please proceed. Marcelino does not appear to be with us today. And Lee Trotta will be on deck. I mean, excuse me, Mary Fadish will be on deck. Gerilyn? My name is Gerilyn Leanna. Oh. My name is Gerilyn Leanna. I live at 522 Grant Avenue in Sheboygan, <clears throat> and I have property in Black River at 5537 Um. 5537 Lonesome Pine Road, um, just west of the beautiful Black River. Um, I believe at the core of my being that life is a rare and precious gift to be nurtured, explored, and cherished. And that includes plants and animals in that life. The world looks like a beautiful place to do our exploring unless pesticides and, and um, chemicals are dumped into that precious life of ours. And I am completely against this project moving forward. It is very, very short-sighted and um, pandering to the rich and the um, white privileged people of this community. And I'm, I'm just appalled that the, the um, Common Council would even consider this very short-sighted um, project where the rich and famous can, can think that they own the land and um, it, it's God's land. It's our land, and it, it's not for us to be uh, polluting it. So that's all I have to say. Well, thank you very much for your comments, Gerilyn. Uh, next is Mary Fadish, and uh, Kristen Dodderly Daut is on deck. Mary Fadish? Mary, we can't hear you. Can you unmute? It doesn't appear that Mary is with us today, so we'll go on to Christian uh, Daughterly. Kristen, are you with us? Very good. Then we'll go on to Leslie Freehill. Leslie, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. 
Thank you. My name is Leslie Freehill. My law firm is Pine Fox. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the city and to the members of the commission today. I'm appearing on behalf of the Friends of the Black River Forest who registered against the permit as it is proposed. We submitted extensive written comments um, yesterday, which I don't intend to repeat here, um, considering the long list of speakers, understandably the commission's limited time. I'd like to just make a few points. Um, our written comments highlight the outstanding natural resources of this property, um, and those have also been highlighted by other speakers. Um, there are three distinct communities of wetlands, Great Lakes, interdunal, and floodplain. Some of these are critically imperiled, meaning that there are five or fewer occurrences left of them at all. The site also hosts state and state and federal threatened and endangered plant and animal species. But I'm not really um, going to reiterate all of the environmental aspects of this right now. What I would like to do is direct the commission's um, attention to the ordinances and the application itself. The commission's duty is to ensure that each conditional use that Kohler proposes meets the city's ordinances as a matter of law. First and foremost, the proposed uses simply do not meet the ordinances. There are two conditional uses being proposed today. One is outdoor institutional, which includes golf courses. The other of which is clear cutting. Clear cutting in zone SR5 under ordinance 152062. Um, one of the requirements that the applicant must show is that clear cutting will improve the level of environmental protection on the property. Nowhere is this addressed in the application, nor in the, um, the city's um, suggested approval um, report that was posted on Friday um, and discussed today. Um, even the DNR has found that this project will have a net negative environmental impact. That's the conclusion that the scores of the DNR <coughs> scientists came to when they poured over this very same set of plans which as others have pointed out, and we point out in our written comments, are actually outdated, particularly due, particularly with respect to the ordinary high water mark. So clear cutting is not permitted anywhere in the city of Sheboygan as a matter of right or as a special use. It is only a conditional use and there must be the required showing of environmental protection. And nowhere has that been addressed. As the second, and considering the time, last point I want to make is that clear cutting is a conditional use also in each of the natural resource protection overlay districts, four of which um, are on this property. Um, those are lakeshore overlays, woodland, wetland, and steep slope overlay. The applicant was to submit a detailed map showing where each of these fall. They submitted an incorrect and inaccurate and outdated map as has been well documented. The plan cannot even go forward as it's currently designed. And for that reason, it's, the application itself is incomplete. Um, the last point I'll make is that there's no reason to be rushing through this CUP approval process right now. Kohler has already conceded that they would not possibly be able to start this project within the one year they would have um, after a CUP would be, would be issued. Um, and so there's no reason for the planning commission to be making a determination now, nor can they based on the fact that the application- Leslie, your time has expired. Please wrap up. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next person to speak is Jane Zabrowski and Rebecca Clark is on deck. Jane? I am here. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Jane Zabrowski. I've lived in Black River for over 20 years. I thank you for the opportunity to address concerns with the Kohler application. This application is different from any other application you've reviewed because no other property exists like it in the city of Sheboygan. This is a unique wooded property as you have heard on the shores of Lake Michigan with globally rare wetlands, rare and endangered plant species and old growth forests, a very important migratory bird stopover and a major wildlife corridor all of which join a state park. The proposed golf course will create major undesirable impacts on the nearby properties and the environment. There's no doubt about it. Because the property is surrounded by both private land and state park land that are not in the city's jurisdiction, Town of Wilson residents will be affected by this project much more than the city just due to its location alone. This application comes at the end of many years of events. 
you might compare it as to right now you're viewing the movie trailer versus many of us out here in Black River have watched the entire movie. I have followed the proposed project from its inception in 2011 when it was first presented to the town as a simple tented forest and which has now evolved into a major championship tournament golf course. If there was a documentary made for the past 10 years on their events, there would be a story of private meetings, influenced politicians, secretive land purchases, misstatements of the truth, a forced annexation, multiple lawsuits, and now an appellate court decision, which Kohler lost that they're asking to be overturned in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. It's hard to explain in three minutes all that's transpired in these past years. After reviewing the written comments which were presented to you, I note the comments in favor of approving the application all come from people and companies with direct connections to Kohler who stand to gain financially. I mean, they even failed to note that they're Kohler grading excavators or 26-year Kohler employees. The comments that are opposed are coming from those people who have nothing to gain financially. And they have clearly outlined a number of serious concerns, starting with there is no wetland fill permit, there are several pending lawsuits, and the clearing of over 70% of the forest. Those issues alone should raise red flags for the plan commission. Please consider hiring experts necessary to analyze these areas of wetland, shoreland, and forestry at the applicant's expense. Kohler had agreed to do this when their incomplete application was being reviewed in the town of Wilson. You're currently also in receipt of an incomplete application. You need more information. The public needs more information. And Kohler, by their very own admission, needs more time based on their extension. Jane, your time has expired. Please wrap up. Okay, the application is not approvable in its present form. I request the plan commission deny the application or at a minimum delay it until you have complete information. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, next is Rebecca Clark and Gary Zimmerman is on deck. Rebecca, the floor is yours. I don't think Rebecca Clark is. Oh, maybe. I'm just listening in, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Uh, you can move on to the next speaker. Very good. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Gary Zimmerman. Gary? Not on. Okay. I see no one else here in the council chambers. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? With that, I'd uh, request uh, a motion to close the hearing. Mayor? Uh, who's it's Marilyn. Yes, Marilyn. I, did, I just wanted you to know that a gentleman sent a text to me on my county website today. Um, he thanked the plan commission for all the good things that has done to make the city look nice. And he also expressed his displeasure at this going forward, and I'll get all the complete information to the planning department. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. we do Jerry Jones? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing portion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and support uh, to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion is, uh, is passed. Okay, now we're uh, to uh, discussion amongst the members of the commission on the application before us. Is there any discussion or questions that you'd like Mayor, to ask? I have a, Go ahead. Mayor, I have a question. Very good. Uh, I was wondering if the uh, Kohler Company representative uh, could comment on the comments, I believe, by Mr. Thalen uh, regarding the high water, uh, the, the high water, and that uh, a couple of the holes may be in jeopardy because of the high water levels. Uh, I would like the Kohler representative to comment on what their plans are 
when it comes time to construction if the high water levels continue to be an issue? Could the presenter please answer that question? You can do it right there. You're live. Yeah, so um, during a recent tour of the, of the property, um, the corridors with, with, within which the 18 holes that uh, are in the approved uh, layout still exist. Um, so the holes in question along the lake shore, uh, specifically holes 18, holes 9, holes 8, and hole 7, those all exist and, and are still there. Uh, relative to the lake levels, um, we believe we can still fulfill the design intent of those four holes within the corridors of our of our permits, and uh, there'll be no additional need for any changes to the design. All the person born, does that answer your uh, question? If I, could just, if, I could, if I could just follow up, uh, does that mean that, for example, if you have the 18th hole at 500 and some yards from T to green that the you're saying that the, 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 the holes that are in question would still be able to have the same yardage that are you're currently proposing or that there that may have to be modified depending on the water level. I am saying that we can fulfill the design from a yardage standpoint. Yes, if, if that particular hole is 500 yards, we can still make that hole 500 yards from those tees into those greens. It's a simple matter of slightly making an adjustment of where the location of the tee and the green is within the permitted corridor. And that is, that is still something that we can accomplish with the current lake levels. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Jerry Jones? Yeah. Hello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dirk, question for you, uh, a few questions for you. Following up on 18, uh, there was a, a, a declaration made during mm -hmm. the public comment section that you potentially would come back in at some time or need to come back in to get uh, shore uh, to shore up the uh, land over there or to protect it from the oncoming lake water. To, is there anything you can address on that level? And would you be adverse to anything in the conditional use permit not permitting that without further discussion? So if I understand the question correctly, this is in relation to the comment about revetment? Correct. Oh, okay. Um, you know, the intent of the design of this golf course is to to take advantage of the natural aesthetic of the lakeshore being the dunes. Our design intent with any layout, regardless of water levels, is to maintain that dune aesthetic. And as far as contemplating how we protect the shoreline, we, we haven't made any determination how we would do that, but the design intent is to maintain those dunes. Great. Uh, Steve, question for you. Um, just so I'm clear, nothing moves forward on the conditional use permit without A, resolution of the lawsuits, and B, all permits, including the DNR permit, being approved, correct? That's, uh, hold tight. Okay. Yeah, those are the conditions that we have set as, uh, that staff has recommended. Okay, great. Uh, so basically, my comment here, before I have one more question for the COLA representatives, that leaves us with three options on this property. Um, as, as put forth today, one, you leave it as it is, or you sell it, or you make it a part of the existing park. Two, you develop this golf course, or three, you develop it as another use, either homes, something. It's already been annexed. It's in the city of Sheboygan. Those are all clear, correct? That's correct. Okay, uh, to the um, question of pesticides, can you address the use and how much, theoretically, we use on a golf course in a given year? Well, I... I that I can't address how much because that's a, a, a large variable depending on the, the property and, and the conditions of, of the turf. I will say this, though, that if you look at our history of our existing golf course facilities, whether it be the two courses at Blackwell Front, the two at Whistling Straits, or our property in St. Andrews, our environmental record when it comes to pesticides and, and things of that nature are, are spotless. 
uh, we work well within the framework of what is allowable uh, by the laws in our industry and our industry. And if anything, we are conservative in that approach, and we always have been. Have you run into any issues over at Whistling? Uh, because that's also along the lakeshore? No, we have not. Okay. Um, second question, uh, next question. With regards to the uh, impact study with reg uh, regarding the finances, can you tell me uh, how the uh, person or the team that did that for you came up with the room tax numbers, uh, the room tax for the village of Kohler, city of Sheboygan, and county of Sheboygan? And secondly, what would be the county of Sheboygan? Would that be outside of Sheboygan and or Kohler? As far as how they specifically came up with those numbers, um, I can't tell you what their, how, what their calculations were. I can tell you that it was based off of a re financial report that we put together relative to the, uh, the revenues that are generated on our existing courses, a conservative, conservative estimate, and based on where those revenues uh, are coming from and whether and the percentage of uh, our guests that actually stay within the village of color versus the city of Sheboygan and such. So it was based off of information that our finance team gave based on our existing clientele and where they are staying and, and where they are, they are coming from. And you addressed exactly what I was driving at. Right. So to date, you know exactly yes. where your golfers and yes. or, or visitors are staying. Right. So if someone says, hey, you know, they're pushing them away from Sheboygan, hotels and they're saying, hey, stay on, stay on village property or Kohler property, you already know you can't house everyone. So there are folks who are staying in Sheboygan at Sheboygan hotels, correct? That is absolutely correct. And it's, I think it's important to note that during the high seat resort season, approximately 60% of our uh, golf guests are actually staying within our resort. The other 40% are actually staying in other parts of uh, the community, the greater Sheboygan community, or they're from the local community themselves. I think there is a misunderstanding that we are purely a golf destination. Certainly that's our primary business, but we have a very strong contingent of local followers that play on a regular basis as well, either from the city of Sheboygan, the town of Wilson, or any of the surrounding areas. And that, and that factors into that as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much for those questions. Is there anyone else that has a question? Go ahead, uh, Dave Hoffman. Um, even though this isn't directly related to conditional use, I'm interested in, um, I assume that you're gonna be looking to host a major tournament at this course if it is built. Uh, knowing what happened out at Whistling Straits for uh, the uh, PGA tournaments, that requires a lot of parking. And uh, what would be your plans for parking for a tournament for this particular course? How would you get enough spaces for that? Well, unfortunately, uh, being selected to host a major championship is somewhat out of our control. Um, you know, it's determined by the governing body bodies, whether it be the PGA of America, the PGA Tour, or the USGA. So we really don't control whether or not this golf course would ever be, ever be able to host an event. Certainly hosting events is a part of our strategy, but we have major championship hosting uh, facilities already in Blackwell Front and Whistling Straits. That's not necessarily our strategic intent with this golf course. Our strategic intent with this golf course is build a world-ranked, world-class golf course. And that doesn't necessarily mean that this, this has to, this course has to host a major championship on the level of a Ryder Cup or, or a PGA uh, championship. So um, yeah, I can't really answer that question because it's kind of out of our control and it's not necessarily our strategic intent with the golf course. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I'd like to um, ask our city attorney to come in on this one. Um, the Conditional use is, uh, is told uh, so that all these uh, court cases that had not been adjudicated yet uh, would happen, and then we would start um, counting the year uh, for uh, the golf course to take out a building permit and begin that building. What happens if uh, another um, court case comes in? Would that then 
have to be adjudicated before uh, this would happen, or is it just the current cases that are uh, currently being uh, adjudicated but haven't been decided yet? So obviously it's going to depend on how you uh, act. However, my understanding of the recommendation uh, uh, in the conditions is that it would, it would toll the, the year for as long as there are pending lawsuits that impact the ability uh, to to begin the uh, to, to begin the construction of the uh, the golf course. Now th there could be lawsuits out there that that won't impact that and uh, that have an impact on other issues. And uh, my understanding is as as the recommendation has been written, those wouldn't necessarily be covered. But anything that relates to the actual beginning construction would. Thank you very much for that explanation. I guess at this point, I'd like to ask for a motion to be uh, placed on the floor. Uh, Mayor, I, Mayor, I had, Mayor, I had one more question. This is Alderman Boren. Very good. Uh, again, I, this question is for the COLA representative. Uh, I know one of the concerns of the, uh, of the neighbors of the proposed golf course is still maintaining access to be walking along the beach and again, with the uh, high water levels uh, that we currently have and the plan for the golf course, uh, is it, is it, does it still look like the access for the neighbors out there is going to be maintained uh, for public access to still walk along the beach? Uh, the answer uh, would be yes. The intent is to still allow for that public access along the beach with the current water levels and the design. Thank you. And the way the water levels are right now, that would, uh, I haven't been out there to take a look at it, of course, but uh, with, the, with the way the current, with the way the, the current water levels are right now, you're saying then that it would still be possible for the, for the neighbors and uh, people from the park uh, to still be able to walk along, walk along that beach. Yes, correct. Uh, within the corridors uh, that our permit has specified for those holes, we're able to, to accommodate that. Uh, as I stated earlier, we'd be able to keep the existing yardages of those holes uh, by simply moving and making slight alterations to the location within that corridor of those tees and greens that affect that and would still maintain access along the lake. Thank you. Any other questions or motions? Jerry. Uh, Jerry Jones. Yeah, with that, I would make a motion to uh, approve subject to staff recommendations and the conditions as put forth therein. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, that motion is on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a couple comments. This is Alderman Bourne. Very good. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be supporting this application uh, this evening for the uh, conditional use, uh, use permit for the golf course. Uh, I was reluctant to do so until I found out that all of the lawsuits that are pending have to be adjudicated before we are going to be uh, uh, issuing uh, the you know, that, that the conditional use permit is actually going to take effect. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the asset to the community is going to be tremendous uh, once this golf course is built. But the, uh, I think the, the ball is still in Kohler's court to uh, take care of these, uh, these lawsuits that are currently pending. And, uh, but uh, with that being said, I'm going to, re uh, I'm going to uh, support the application for the conditional use permit. And once the lawsuits are adjudicated, if they are in Kohler's favor, uh, by, doing this, by doing that this evening, I don't think is uh, putting the cart before the horse, but once these lawsuits are adjudicated, and again, in Kohler's favor, it will expedite uh, them being able to do the course. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'd ask the uh, planner to please call the roll. 
Mayor Vandersteen? I vote aye. Alderperson Bourne? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. David Hoffman? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. And Don Sfitan? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you to everyone for your presentations and, uh, and, and uh, participation in the hearing. We appreciate it. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for January 12th. I'd like to wish everyone a, a happy holiday coming up. And I'd call on uh, Jerry Jones for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Very Se good. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Good night, everyone.